Hello everybody, welcome to another EKG video. That means it is Friday as we're dropping an EKG video every Friday on this EDX Video Pro channel. My name is Dr. Carlo Oger, board certified emergency physician with DrER.TV. And if you're watching this, you're actually watching EDX Video Pro. I thought I'd include this quote, train yourself to take nothing personally. I mean, that's just um, a good quote about living a happy life. If you take things too personally, you're too stressed out, uh, things happen. Uh, we make mistakes, even us doctors and professionals, and patients have bad outcomes. If you take it too personally, you won't be able to function and take care of new patients. So don't take it personally. Uh, they might get upset at you, might get a patient complaint, even a lawsuit, but it's not personal. So move on, try to be happy and try to learn from mistakes. I thought I'd include this picture, even though it's not an EKG. I just thought it was a good picture. This is using the Glidoscope, which is a special device that has a camera attached to the laryngoscope as we can ready to intubate the patient. And this is what they called a really bad airway. You can see the swelling around the um, vocal cords, the opening, the vocal cords will actually be over here. Uh, so this is a soft tissue between it. You can see the swelling that is going on here, and that makes things really tight and difficult. This is the endotracheal tube as the patient's intubated. Whoever did this intubation did a phenomenal job, as this is definitely a rectal tightening kind of scenario where um, if you can't get that airway in, the patient's gone. So job well done. All right, so we're talking about EKGs, and we're gonna learn about escape pacemakers. If the ventricles are not stimulated as a result of conduction or automaticity, then a slower escape or backup rhythm emerges to pace the heart. If failure of the escape pacemakers results, then a systole will follow. That means that there's always a way of backup, that if the sinus is not conducting through, then there's some way the heart has to have an escape pacemaker or something else in the heart takes over so that we don't end up with a dead heart. When the sinus node fails to discharge or the AV node fails to conduct the sinus impulses, escape rhythms discharge from the AV junction at a rate usually below 60 beats per minute. If the AV junctional backup also fails, then the more distal conduction system, the bundle branches or his percunji fibers, then stimulates the heart at even slower rates. So let's summarize this again. Escape pacemakers are just that. Pacemakers that uh, escape the normal activity of the sinus because for whatever reason, either the sinus is not working or there's some kind of conduction abnormality not letting that uh, electricity pass through so therefore these escape pacemakers start acting out so that a systole or a flat heart does not result usually the escape pacemaker comes from the AV junction at a rate of around 60 beats per minute or just below that but if that one fails there's also a backup further down the heart in the bundle branches and his Purkinje fibers this is an example of an escape a V uh, junctional rhythm. A V nodal escape rhythm. It's a narrow complex bradycardia. It is regular and has a rate around 50 beats per minute. P waves are missing or they may happen immediately following the QRS as here. So they're missing in here, but they're actually immediately after here. These are called retrograde P waves and are buried in the ST segment. So these two are both examples of an AV node escape rhythm. These patients are usually not symptomatic because the rate is fast enough, 45 to 55 beats per minute, enough to perfuse the organs despite the loss of the atrial filling kick. There's about 10 to 15% contribution of the atrium to the total output of the heart's um, blood flow. Therefore, when you lose the atrium because it's not pumping right, it's not contributing to it, you lose about 10 to 15% of the total blood that should go out with every heartbeat and you can get symptomatic. However, because 45 to 55 beats per minute is just enough, then you're usually not symptomatic. 
Junctional escape rhythms are secondary cardiac rhythms that develop as a result of sinus node depression, whether that be electri electric, medication use, acute MI, or whatever. This is an idioventricular escape rhythm. Both the sinus node and AV node have failed. These beats are considerably less dependable than junctional escape rhythms and could fall abruptly. Hence the need for an artificial pacemaker. So this patient will need surgery and put an artificial pacemaker. These are easy to identify because they are wide. Look how much wide they are compared to the other ones we saw before because they have distorted QRS and missing P waves. Their rate is far slower, usually between 20 to 40 beats per minute. Idioventricular bready dysrhythmias usually do cause lightheadedness, dizziness, and near syncope, which means almost passing out, because of inadequate tissue perfusion. Now the rate is too slow, too much loss of cardiac output, so the patients are usually symptomatic. And lastly, we got agonal idioventricular rhythms. Distorted QRS complex are slow. They are irregular and commonly seen during the final phases of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. During agonal idioventricular rhythm, the pacemaker is just unreliable. Its isolated beats do not generate cardiac output and degenerate abruptly into asystole, which is the total patient demise and death. So let's review repetition. That's how we learn, guys. Escape pacemakers. So pacemakers, the sinus node, sometimes it stops working. You got the AV knot as a backup. That fails. You got further down the bundle branches and his Purkinje fibers as a distal conduction system takes over. The first one, not so symptomatic because it usually goes around 40 to 50 beats per minute. But the uh, further down, it's much slower, much more unreliable. They are narrowed complex QRS. They usually have no P weight or they have a buried P wave. So it's called a retrograde P wave. Then um, you got the idioventricular escape reading. So no AV node. Now it's the idioventricular is when the, both the sinus and the AV node have failed. This is a very unstable rhythm and it can fall abruptly. And these patients need artificial pacemakers. Their rate is usually much slower on 20 to 40 beats per minute. And then we got the agonal idioventricular rhythms. That's when the last stages of CPR, they are irregular. They're commonly seen in the last stages of CPR. They're slow and they ultimately lead to demise and death. Hey guys, play this again and again until you get this down. These things will come up time and time again and it's good to be nice and sharp in uh, being able to identify AV node escape rhythms versus junctional escape rhythms and idioventricular escape rhythms and then the, 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 what that means to the patient and the fact that you need to be, as it progresses from uh, AV node to junctional or even trickler uh, and even agonal, uh, more aggressive you're gonna be in patient treatment. Hey, I hope you guys are learning with this uh, EKG series. I'm certainly learning plenty when making these videos. We will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.